Good morning everybody. It is another wonderful day outside here in New Zealand. So I thought I'd spend it inside making another video for you lot. And today we have a Microtech router board, model 433. Uh, these are often used for uh, outdoor wireless um, networks going long distance. Uh, you can uh, fit up to three wireless cards uh, in, in these slots here and uh, it just has a, a basic network interface on, on the other end. Um, 12 volts in or power over ethernet, uh, serial connector for debugging and whatnot. Now this one doesn't boot. Uh, it doesn't even beep. The f uh, when, you, when you turn them on they give you a beep and when they've booted they give you two beeps and we get no beeps out of this one. Um, it's not entirely dead. I have uh, connected a serial cable to uh, the port there and you monitor it on uh, on terminal software. Such as this. Now hopefully that'll come up nice and clear but uh, once you uh, turn it on it'll come up. It's got the model number. Um, it says uh, authorization passed. It gives you CPU frequency, memory size. This one's 128 meg. Uh, press any key within two seconds to enter setup. Now you can do that and you get a, a bunch of options. You can tell it to boot from the Ethernet port uh, which allows you to then load the firmware uh, into it should everything have uh, become corrupt there but this is a, seems to be okay. Um, after that it gives us a PHY error which um, I think stands for physical error and now what happens is the um, network ports um, don't work on this model uh, when connected it, um, it, yeah, there's just nothing there um, so I can't I can't attempt to load the firmware um, or or get any response from it via the Ethernet um, and the lights on the ports do silly things um, they either stay on or don't come on or, or what have you um, yeah so so that's what we're looking at a physical error um, which which refers to the the Ethernet physical interface that some somewhere has gone bad. So where does that leave us? Well, the first rule, of course, uh, is check voltages. Now again, um, don't have a schematic for uh, this model. Um, I don't think you would ever get your hands on one of those unless you knew someone on the inside. So we need to use our knowledge of electronics and have a look around at uh, what there is um, that <coughs> manages the voltage rails on here. We have uh, what looks like a switching uh, inductor there and uh, that one there, we've got a, the transistor that switches that, that'll be creating one of the voltage rails. Um, we can have a look down here, there's another little IC and another little coil that's um, doing I think 5 volts down that end. It's uh, likely power for these cards anyway. Um, uh, please excuse my voice. I'm also getting over a cold at the moment. <laughs> um, we've got this one down here, which um, I believe is just a regulator of some sort. Um, nice uh, ca big capacitor there. Um, gives away that that's likely another voltage rail. There's no uh, inductor on there. It's not switching, so um, it's it's quite possibly just regulating a small voltage there. Um, and when you look at proximity of things, um, CPU there, um, possibly power sourced off here. Um, this one being down here, likely power source for this area. And uh, that IC there is our network interface control IC. So uh, what I've done already, um, and I can show you again, is um, when I've powered it on, there's uh, no voltage on here, um, which is not a good sign at all. Um, and I've got, I think it was something like 3 volts and 2 volts there, there, uh, but nothing on that end. Um, it might be that um, there's an overload on there that's, that's, that's sh um, just shutting down of its own accord. Um, but what we will do next is grab the multimeter, 
take a measurement of that point to ground and uh, see what we get. And uh, in this case, there's only um, just under 9 ohms to ground, um, and that does seem quite low. Um, if we look over here, for example, uh, we're getting sort of a K, 1K in climbing, as, as you'd sort of expect as these capacitors charge up. Um, that's more realistic for um, a power rail. Um, having a low resistance like that, you might not think it would be much, um, have much effect on anything because um, with Ohm's law, um, if you have a look at the data sheet for this device here, it's only um, expecting 1.8 volts. Uh, that's what it runs on. So I'd imagine there'd only be 1.8 volts coming out of there. Um, and 1.8 over 8 ohms doesn't sound like a lot. But uh, it's possible that could be everything. Um, so next step, what I'm going to do, I've attached a couple of leads here. And uh, I'm just going to force uh, 1.8 volts into that line. Um, see if anything gets warm. That may indicate to us uh, where the fault is. So what I've done here is I've got um, a wire on each side of this capacitor. And I'm going to hook it up to my supply right up there. It's a funny angle, isn't it? But I've got a new tripod here, so it uh, yeah doesn't go much higher than that. So we'll just have to look at it from an angle. And uh, we've got our 1.8 volts. And uh, if you do the math, uh, 1.8 over 9 ohms is uh, about 200 milliamps. So we'll connect this up. And interestingly, we're getting double that. Um, possible reasons for that is the uh, resistance on that line is going down when the uh, chip that it's feeding starts to try and uh, run and transistors turn on and whatnot. So if we have a bit of a feel around, um, they're the memory, memory ICs, I believe they're not too hot at all. They're cold, stone cold. The regulator there, there's no warmth on the regulator there. Um, CPU's obviously cold because the rest of it's not on, but um, yeah, that's that's warming up already, and uh, entirely likely, being the network IC, that that IC has failed, um, and uh, is is applying too much load on that voltage on that rail which is causing that to not come up um, um, it's it's slowly warming up uh, it's interesting how your finger acts as a bit of a heat sink and if you hold it on there long enough it cools off slightly but uh, if you leave it off for a bit you can notice quite a bit of, a bit of warmth there so um, so I did a bit of research based on this information and other people have said, yes, these ICs are a known point of failure. Uh, they've also said that that um, regulator there uh, can also fail. But at this point in time, I'm thinking it's the IC. Um, likely causes, as these were used out in the field, um, up, on, up on poles in high places, uh, lightning strikes nearby. Uh, we, def we, we didn't have any strikes on our equipment directly, but... Uh, um, definitely in the vicinity can cause um, an EMP uh, induced voltage in the network lines that run up the pole to these things that live in boxes and uh, um, not using shielded twisted pier which is probably a bad thing in hindsight that may have saved it um, but uh, yeah that's my theory I'm sticking with it um, and I have ordered another IC, um, it arrived uh, yesterday from China, and it only took about three weeks, so that's pretty good, I think. First thing I've ever purchased off eBay, so, um, so yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's warming up a bit, so um, we'll suck that IC off, we'll see if that uh, low resistance goes away. 
Uh, we can even plug the plug the power in properly and see if there's a voltage rail back on there. Um, and uh, go from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just uh, apply some fresh solder to the pads. get out my hot air gun and uh, see if I can uh, lift the sucker off.